Okay, so we are doing chapter two, and we did all of this stuff, and then um, specify a simple model uh, with bobblehead entered last. So here we have the model. So the model we're going to test is we're going to predict attendance, and we're going to use ordered month, which is a variable we created, ordered day of the week, which is another variable we created, and bobbleheads. And uh, by setting the seed, that means that um, uh, if many people try the same random sample, we'll all get the same random sample. Um, next, we go through uh, what we talked about in class already, and we set up uh, we this called training test, and we go out and we, what did we do? We took a subset, and we made that for the test set, and another set for the training set, and uh, if we check what those are, for example, if we look at what the test set is, just to make sure. So I go to here. And so you can see that it has um, all the variables in it. Maybe it's better if we do a head and just look at the head. Even that's not so great. Maybe if, well, anyway, you can see that um, we have uh, uh, all of the variables, including this training test, whether it's uh, yeah, it's either the test or the training, and here we're selecting just the test sample. Okay, so we've divided our data into a training uh, set and a testing set. Okay, now we try to fit the model which means we put in the model that we specified up here. And to set the model, apparently, you need to have these kinds of brackets around it. So um, <coughs> then uh, <coughs> you put, in, uh, put that in here. Specify that you're using the training set. You're using a linear model, which means linear regression. And uh, so you have this called the train model fit. So let's do that. And then if you want to see what that is, we just print it out. We get um, the uh, intercept, uh, ordered month May, ordered month July, ordered month September, and so on. So this is actually very nice because what it has done is we talked about um, creating dummy variables. So we said that whenever you have, um, so if you have dummy variable with uh, say five categories, five levels, five different values, I'm sorry, if you have a categorical variable that has five different values, then you can make four dummy variables. So it's done that because we had categorical variables, both this one and this one are categorical. In fact, actually, bobblehead is also categorical, but it's only yes or no, so it doesn't need to do anything for that. So in other words, for ordered month, uh, actually there probably aren't 12 <coughs> different e uh, elements there, so probably it's only going to have the ones that actually occurred, so it won't be 12, maybe it'll be less than 12, and order day of the week, there's probably all days of the week, so that would be seven uh, days, so it would create six uh, variables, so let's see what it did. So for order day of the week, we have Tuesday, Thursday, maybe it's not so many, Saturday, those are the only, oh no, Sunday, oh here it is, sorry, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. So it's six of them, since there are seven possible days. Now with the months, I guess it was one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all. So uh, th maybe there were seven months, so there are six dummy variables. So it set all of that up. Just. Uh, that did that automatically for us, so that's really a big help um, in uh, 
in Excel, you'd have to do it all yourself. So anyway, um, as we've seen in class, how to do that. So uh, we have that. And then we also have uh, the coefficients for each of these variables. So, just to give you, I don't want to write all of this out. I wonder if we could get it to write it all out. I want, let me see. Okay, so let's try to, sh so what does this mean? This is the uh, linear model. So basically it means that we have an equation where we have, a w uh, the intercept is this, and then um, it's this number times this variable, and then this number times this variable, and so on. So, actually, it looks like this. If you wanted to write it out, it's kind of horrible looking. But like I said, it's um, this number, which is, I guess, this number, plus this times this number. This is um, has all these extra decimal points, but uh, I don't know why they're showing up here, but they're not showing up there. But Basically, it's those numbers, plus this uh, June times this number, and so on. Now, by the way, as an assignment, um, I'd like you to try to do um, to generate this equation yourself, and I'll give you a few hints here. So, see if you can generate that equation. Now, first of all, let's look at this. First, what does the train model fit? If we do the structure of it, we find out it's a list. It's a list of 13 elements. The first element is called coefficients. The second element is called residuals. The third element is called effects. The fourth element is called rank. The fifth element is called fitted values. Assign QR. We don't know what these are. Uh, residual, something else, contrast. So these are all things we have no idea what they are. Um, but terms, I don't know what that is. Um, so, however, I think the second one was called coefficients, and or maybe it was the first one. Anyway, if we look at dollar coefficients, we get the coefficients, that's these numbers, and these numbers. The coefficients are those numbers. These are the names of the variables, but these are just the labels. We've seen that before, labels or names uh, for these numbers. But really, we're the. this is, a, I think, maybe it's a vector uh, of numbers, but it's labeled numbers. Okay, that could be confusing, but that's what it is. Um, so next, so we just saw that these are numbers, they're the coefficients uh, in this model. So we really want those to be multiplied by the, uh, by the variables. And actually, uh, we noticed that uh, the variables here are the labels or the names in the coefficient uh, vector, in this coefficient vector. Okay, so we could access the n the variables because they're the names here. So we could actually access the names of these things here, and those will be <coughs> the variables, the variable names. So, so in other words, this here is the are the are the numbers, but if we look at the names for those, those are going to be the variable names. Okay, now, suppose I want to get the first variable name, which is called intercept, which is not really a variable name, but the second one is a, is a variable name. Okay, so suppose I wanted to get the first or the second, how could I do that? Well, what kind of thing is names here? It's a vector. So if I want to get the first one, what could I do? I could put square bracket next to it and one, and then close the square bracket. In other words, I could do this. So I could do this, and that would be the intercept if I said 2, because I'm accessing the second element in the names vector, I get that. Okay? Now once again, if I do without the names, 
if I do this one without the names, remember the coefficients are num are the numbers are the the coefficients. So what would I get here, for example? I'll get the coefficient for um, the second coefficient, and that's actually the coefficient that get that multiplies this the variable called this. Okay, if I did the if I look at the third coefficient, what would I do? Because coefficients is a vector, and I can access the different different elements like that. Okay, now use that, these two that, that I just explained, the names and without the names, and use the paste function. So explore the paste function. So you can explore that. It's like concatenating. So if you explore the paste function, and what you want to do is, and then you need to use a for loop which looks something like this. So this is the for loop, and you'd put your some code in here, inside there. So you might look up uh, how to do a for loop, and um, try to get this done by putting the right thing in here. You're going to use the paste function in here. You're going to, I'll give you another hint, you're going to define a variable and you're going to keep adding to that variable. So see if you can't build... Now, actually, when I did that, I got this. I got... Uh, no. When I did it, I got this, which is uh, a little bit wrong because it has this trailing plus sign here doesn't make sense to have an ending plus sign. And also, I don't want this part here. So then I had to use um, something like this. I had to define, the, I had called the variable eq for equation. Then I had to use the sub function to clean it up. So you can look that up. And this doesn't work exactly right, but um, you can clean it up. So look up the sub function. Okay, so that's your that's a homework assignment, which is due uh, first class before our first class. So here it is. Uh, build the equation due January seventh. So try to build this. Okay, and uh, that's just a short assignment. Okay, so now let's get back to the code and let's try and finish this up. I'll start that in another video.